Ladies and gentlemen, got another great episode lined up for you here this evening. But first, make sure to like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content we're pushing out here at Talking With A Dad. And to check us out on all our social media platforms, that's Facebook, IG, and Twitter, Talking With A Dad. And finally, but not least, TalkingWithADad.com website is live. Our guest tonight is a comic book enthusiast, kung fu master, and social commentator, and sometimes social activist. Please help me welcome Voice of the Fat Mantis. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Talking With The Dad Podcast. This is episode 32 with our guest Mantis. This has been a long time coming. We've wanted you to be on the show uh, since its inception, honestly. Um, tell the people who you are Hello, quick. great. Hello, I am uh, known as the Fat Mantis, or, or Roy, you know, as, as my friends would, would call it. Um, you know, I am a YouTuber, and I am a web comic book creator. Um, I've got a graphic novel in the pipeline, and an all-around awesome... All right, Mantis. Hello. That was a, a great intro. You have a novel on the way. It's incredible. Yeah. I, uh, I, graphic I, novel. I, a graphic novel. I can't it's, read it's... anything without pictures. So. <laughs> oh, man, it's the same thing, right? You're telling a story <laughs> oh, through yeah. a book. That's what a novel is. <laughs> Steve, do you want to kick it off? Kick it off this evening with some uh, some questions? Because I'm kind yes. of freelancing it. I've been. Which, Go ahead. Which, which, by the way, I will say, you know, with that uh, with that episode with Ek, uh, EK, uh, the questions were amazing. Yeah, it was like Dan Rather over here, man. It was wonderful, man. <laughs> uh, well, well, listen, impressed. listen but since me and Zach have already had a meeting with all the interns, the producers of the show, we know this is the last episode, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get into it. We're going to get into it on some things. We, we, we fired <laughs> all 18 of the interns. <laughs> I chased two of them out of Zach's office. Very clingy little people. Yo, don't get me too, brother. <laughs> In your intro, I refer to you as a YouTube commentator, social analyst. But what I, what me and Zach really want to know is, when did you become a kung fu master? Take us through the beginning. How did you earn the name Fat Mantis? Okay. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, okay, so uh, it actually goes back, my, you know, my martial arts. I think every kid takes martial arts, you know, when they're little, right? So mm -hmm. I was like in junior high school. And I did some Kung Fu. You know, I want to be Bruce Lee. I was watching, like, on Fox 5. On hmm. Saturdays and Sundays, they would have, like, the old Kung Fu movies, Shaw Brothers shit. And uh, so I was into it. So, you know, I, I, that was my first training in martial arts. I did that for about three or four years. I was younger. Um, and then, you know, throughout, throughout uh, you know, high school, you know, you want to get laid. <laughs> you don't have time for martial arts. You know what I mean? You want to be popular when a party. You want to do things. You want to get into trouble. Right. Uh, find yourself. So there wasn't any time for that. I like quit two things, martial arts and Boy Scouts. And I was like, I'd rather hang out with these girls over here. <laughs> so uh, uh, I never gave up D&D, &D, but that's I did that on the side. Right. Like if my D&D &D friends would walk up to me, I would pretend I didn't my, know who they were. I got to find my bag right. of dice. It, it, it seems to come up. I have a bag of dice over there. It's three Zach, pounds. This, Zach, this is something. Uh, so remember when you guys started the D&D &D game over at uh, our buddy's house? Mm -hmm. I was telling you about the mythical GM that if you tried to kill a villain early, he would spank you every time for it. That's this guy. Oh, oh that's so <laughs> sick. <laughs> I, mean, I, I actually, I never time. made a single play session. They uh, they added you, some people. You never showed up. Or? They added some people that I didn't, I didn't agree with. Um, right. I'm a very opinionated person. I, I don't like people generally, uh, and they added some people that I specifically did not like, and so I, I left. I left. I feel that. I feel that. Um, you know, that's that's the problem with it because, like, not only is it a small percentage of people who are willing to play and willing to do that, but um, it's it's very personal to do like role playing and all, all these. Things. And you're gonna you spend a lot of time. Person. Yeah, you gotta spend a lot of time with these people, right? You're There's like, a lot of backstory. I'm pretending I'm an elven wizard. <laughs> you can't just have a dude you hate sitting across. The exactly. Room exactly. <laughs> I I 100% agree with that. Yeah, I gotta find my bag but of dice. It's over there somewhere. I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, but to finish, finish that, uh, the, you know, to finish off Steve's question, um, you know, I really didn't get into serious, serious martial arts until I moved to Virginia, and that was after college. Okay. After college, I ended up down, moving to, and I actually was writing a novel then, at, at that point, an actual, uh, like, a, re a read-me novel. Okay. Words. Um, I failed at that. It's okay to be a failure in life. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> um, but I was in Virginia writing a book, and, uh, you know, my girlfriend at the time, she got me, uh, you know, kung fu lessons for three months. That was probably the best birthday that's a sick birthday just, present. Oh, yeah, it was just... awesome. And I fell for it. Like, you know, it's martial arts can sometimes be very culty. 
And like, I joined the cult there. Like I didn't have family down there. I was just like living down there and they were my family. And I was at the Kloon, like, at, you know, five days a week. And I started teaching kids. And I said, you know, if you start like to get tuition off, you start helping out. But then I started having my own classes and I started running and I started doing all this. Um, so the mantis part is that we, we were teaching long fist and we were teaching northern praying mantis kung fu. Um, and man, I, I don't know if you know, but like mantis kung fu is very esoteric. There's a lot of esoteric mood. Um, now I have the advantage of being like a big dude. Right. So I can do esoteric things. And it's not always as pivotal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm doing Mantis stuff. I'm doing Mantis stuff. And everyone started calling me Mantis. Okay. Uh, somehow it became like American Mantis. Everyone's like, the American Mantis is here. The American Mantis is here. <laughs> and so that was an ongoing nickname. Uh, you know. Um, I like it. And so that, it really changed my life being into martial arts. It got me together. You know, it, it just really was an awakening for me. Um, so the, the, the mantis stuck with me. So later on in life, I would name, you know, my studios, uh, giant mantis comic. Right. Um, and then when I made a YouTube, th th originally it was going to be called, uh, the YouTube channel was going to be called wrath of the fat mantis. Ooh. Um, but my sister was like, Roy, you're already like a very aggressive dude. You don't want to associate with like being an aggressive male. Okay. With wrath. Like, the, it, like, almost that's like smart. I was going to shoot up someplace. That, that's, that's, like, that's, that's smart. Right, so I, I turned it into voice of the fat man. I like it. I like a man with an origin story. Yeah. If you have a nickname you, and it has an origin story that's, that's incredible, there'll be a book written about you one day, I promise, whether it's good or bad. What it is is everyone has an origin story for their nickname, just not everyone's willing to share it. That's a good point. Right? That, is a, that, is a, that is a really good point. Um, while Steve is, Steve is away dealing with, with family matters, um, no pun intended, um, I got a, I got a question son. for you. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, his, his children are great. Um, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> where do you get your inspiration for your videos? If no one has seen the videos for for Mr. Mantis here, uh, as I will refer to him uh, for the rest of the the rest of the episode, he does these videos that start off in an area and you kind of see where it's going, and then it just somewhere along the line it goes off the rails and it becomes you become enamored with it, right? You can't you can't it's a good, you, you can't look away. Right, and that's it's really good, and that's a really good thing to be as a YouTuber. Where do you get your inspiration for your videos? That is a, that is a real good question because actually finding topics is hard, and as you know, I had to start getting into the review game. Yep. Uh, and I admit that I prefer doing the social commentary. I prefer just looking through the news and talking about what idiots everyone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, that's a good, that's a wonderful, that's a thing. Um, you know, the, the, when I did my first episode, my first like what the, it, what is canonically my first episode. Um, it was like there were three stories in the news that I thought were either bullshit or silly, and I wanted to mock them. And it, I, I remember I was up having my coffee, um, and I just recorded. I put it on Facebook. I was like, "Welcome to Morning Reflection." Okay. And this, and I, and I, I hit it up. And I remember the three things were um, the ladies, the ladies' soccer parade was about to happen. Okay. Uh, and then there, there was the old man who dropped his his like two-year-old oh. grandchild off of a cruise ship yep and then he had the nerve the audacity to blame the cruise ship yeah okay yeah i remember uh, that and, one and then there was and, and i think it was epstein too i think those were the three things and oh. i just had this funny thing um and I, w I wasn't ever gonna follow up on it um and i just got a lot of good from my friends being like you are so funny you need to continue this you need to keep doing this so i was like you know what i'll give him more i'll give him more fat mantis <laughs> you know um, but, you know, to keep it fresh, I can't do that all the time. It, it is actually hard finding material, which is why I got into the review. Game. Because um, I, you guys have praised me on the, some of the hits I get. Like, I have low mm -hmm. subs, but big hits. And a lot of some of the bigger hits, they all come from, uh, you know, reviewing fanboy property, you know? Like, my biggest hits are American Horror Story. Like, American Horror Story fans are, like, the greatest people in the world. They are yeah, engaged. You review an episode of that, and they, yeah, they're really engaged. They're really supportive. And there's less trolling. I find, like, Star Wars has the worst trolls. Hold on for a second now. Hold on, you hold on for a second. Wait. I'm not gonna let you come in here and talk about Zach's favorite property like oh, that, you my God. son of no, a no, bitch. No, 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 no. <laughs> Absolutely not. Don't don't throw that rabbit hole on me, please. Again. Well, no, I saw how uh, how like you're like I I skipped Rise of Skywalker because I had to be at work at eleven. <laughs> no, no, no. Hold on. <laughs> no, no, no. The movie was at eleven at night. I had to be to work at uh, eight a.m. Hold on, I'm actually, okay, I was you okay, said that okay. the other day, and I realized something that I have to bring up to you, my good friend, Zach. That movie came out when you had left the school and you were no longer working there. When we did it had come out? All, 
it came out the day that Saturday when you were no longer at the school. Nope, it came out after that. It came out the it came out the December day before. December seventeenth, I believe. Yeah, December twentieth. I had started my new job by then. I started the new Did job. Did you start on the, it? December second, uh. I started the new job. It was the it, uh, release date was the twentieth, December twentieth. Very very good memory, being very close to the seventeenth. Um, yeah, no, no, I, there was Ooh, no was way I could go see it, and I didn't care. Let's let's be fair. I don't care about Star Wars. It, it's this huge, That's huge fair. hit, like, and and it affects popular culture so much. I just purely do not care about it in the slightest. I I have it's a thing that, that has such good source material, and it could be sub, something that's so good. Pirates in space could be fucking incredible, but then it's forty five minutes of political talk about some planet that I don't give a shit about. But that's. That's that, 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 that's all day on CNN right there. That's that's like my. I don't watch day. the news oh, he, he clearly, is, bro. <laughs> clearly. Oh, man, he's like, um. <laughs> so, hold, hold on for a second. Yeah, no, I. You know, I. Did you guys? So I, I, I came in back in. Thanks for being so understanding. This is Absolutely. the talking with a dad podcast. So I had to be a dad for a second there, just for twenty seconds out of my day. <laughs> Real shout out goes Fair to my enough. goes to my wife who holds everything down. Zach knows this as well as you do, Roy. If Santana was not in my life, this house would be on fire. Kids would be in full Lord of the Flies mode. So I know you guys talked about the graphic novel. Did did we already go over that? No. no we didn't. We didn't. I, I asked him what that. his inspiration for his videos are. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I know Santana because uh, I remember <laughs> I know you. We lived together when we were uh, like back in the day. Yeah, we were in our 20s. So I know what kind of shitstorm your life is. Bro. <laughs> so this I've seen a, you when I visit. I'm like, what is going a, on here? This is a family show. Zach only knows me in this life. I, I want to keep it that way. There's no need to give this guy any more ammunition. As far as Zach is concerned, I was born a Mormon. I mean, I was born. <laughs> you don't even know what religion you are. <laughs> so, uh, but no, I know, I know the magic she works, and, and you know that, that's something I definitely love Santana for, for for you know cleaning up my friends, keeping Steve's Listen. life together. <laughs> uh, one day we were, I was out with Zach one day, and I think we went to go see the Joker, and uh, I pulled out my phone, and he was like, "What do you got going on tomorrow, Steve?" And I was like, "Well, hold on one second and I like pull out the phone. He's like, "Is your is your Cali calendar co color coordinated I'm like, <laughs> I'm like it is <laughs> I'm like, but this is not because i'm a genius it's because my wife knows i respond to these bright colors and if i don't have them i'll just drift off into the ether but while we're talking about ether yeah. so I, I i have a general general amount of questions i have to ask you because getting more into your backstory and this is something i talked to zach about uh before you came on the show rory a lot of people don't know this about you you went to new pulse and you studied political science Right, so you're I, not just I, you're not some just a madman that spouts off rhetoric on the internet. Like this man knows all the branches of the government, Zach, and he can spell them as well. Unlike a lot of other I, social, I can't <laughs> social comedies. Do you find that as someone that went to school for political science, do you ever get to the point where you're watching stuff on YouTube? I've seen this happen to Zach a few times, where Zach knows what he's talking about in regards to economics and engineering and building. Right, so every once in a while, I'll send him a video of someone, and he's like, "That guy's a moron." He's like, he didn't cite any facts. Do you ever find yourself looking at other YouTubers going, "I don't think they understand political science at all." You don't have to name anyone, but does that happen? <laughs> I'm not gonna name it. We should we should go out of our way not to to mention any other YouTubers. Okay. Uh, but um, no, I do. Here's what it is. I do see. I do. Uh, I do see that a lot. Um, but I have reached like this point where I'm less judgmental about people's truths. Mm -hmm. And what it is is that everyone has their own truth and they want to speak it. And sometimes it's not actually based in reality or in fact. Right. And that's cool too. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, know what I mean? Yeah, like, right. you see some, a lot, there's a lot of YouTube. It's, heck, there's a lot of real mainstream media that isn't based on. Correct. Um, but you just kind of go with it. You're just like, they're speaking their truth. Who am I to say their truth is invalid? Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know what it is? You can choose to shut it out. You can be like, you know what? I, I'm not going to I'm not gonna dig it. Sometimes it's fun to watch an ignorant person go on. Yeah. <laughs> right? Sometimes that's the entertainment factor being generated just right there. Uh, um, just watching an idiot speak. Um, so there's – I mean that's 90% of YouTube, right? That's all I gave myself. So um, I, I'm a live and let live guy at this point. So I'm just right. like let them speak their truth. If, if it's so offensive to me, I'll turn it off. But I don't – I wouldn't want to challenge them or whatever. 
But I, I do think that it's cool that we have YouTube and it's a chance while freedom of speech is still a thing um, that people can just say whatever they're feeling. Uh, even if it's based on conspiracies or idiots. Like I watch some conspiracy, some truthers or whatever. Like right. I, I watch some tubes where people believe in the flat earth. No. Um, I, 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 and, you know, more power to them. <laughs> you know, if that's their truth. <laughs> So this would be a good time to, since we're talking about universal truths and individual truths, I'm going to let Zach lay it out for you. Zach, can you, can you educate Mantis on a truth that we've been struggling with all week this week, please? And let's just get to Mantis. I, I'm going to sit back. Zach is the only person that can keep his cool and tell this type of stuff because I literally... What, what are we referring to here? The, what, so the, you know, you, you know what we're talking about. I can't say it without having a seizure. God dang it! You know what we're talking about. All right. About so, <laughs> uh, eight days ago now, uh, Twitch introduced the Twitch Safety Advisory Council. Um, they had a huge blog post about it. Uh, apparently, these are just a bunch of uh, content creators and people from the industry, uh, and even some outside the industry. They have some like uh, CEOs and like professors and stuff on this um that they want to run new policies and such by uh to i, I don't even know they, they i guess they clarified what, what the fuck it's for but um to, to make sure that they're not like offending anyone or like harming anyone with potential new policies right so so they they introduce these people Okay, not a bad idea, I guess, in a platform that is um, as big and as wide and as broad as the Amazon-owned Twitch is. Um, right. one, of the, one of the number one leaders in traffic on the internet currently, right? Especially with the quarantine going on. So they do, they do this thing. Okay, seems like a good idea on the outside, right? Um, they have a bunch of people, for, some for the community. Um, Co Carnage, like I'll just name a few. Co Carnage is a guy who's really the only person to ever super successfully, or the original person to ever super successfully be a variety streamer on Twitch, right? He, the guy can stream whatever he wants, and he's gonna have the the base amount of people in there, regardless of what he's playing, right? Good for him. That, um, that's cool. There's a doctor who's a professional, or a professor in the School of Criminology and Criminal Justice in Florida. Um, there, there's some other professors and stuff in here. And then we get down to this this Twitch streamer who was a high level Heroes of the Storm player, a, a dead game now. Um, it, it's ferociously Steph is her name, um, and she seems to be the the bane of the existence of this Twitch advisory council. Um, I don't know where Twitch went wrong with this. Um, firstly, Steph is a, I don't, what do you call it? A transgender, um, trans animal, maybe? I, I don't know. I don't know what the, the correct term is. Wait, wait what did you, what? <laughs> trans animal? What, yeah. What um, she She's identifies a, as a deer, a, a female deer. No, she doesn't. <laughs> yes. No, you're kidding. So, <laughs> yeah. So I'll read the bio that Twitch put up. There's some clips that, that I could send you that are that are not Wait, favorable. Be, be, before we before we read the bio, it is important for us here talking with a dad that you people understand. By you people, I mean anyone listening that we are not you people. <laughs> yeah, we went down a dark road there. <laughs> we are not judging. Uh, no, 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 not in the slightest. I, I know what going on with this. Yeah, we're not judging her for being a transgender female. What we are going to key in on is the part that Zach brought, brought up is that she has left that realm and is now considered a transhuman oh, trans species. Might be the correct, uh, Hold transhuman. on, I want to get things clear. Okay. Yes. Biologically, she is a human female? True? Male, I believe. Male, male. Yeah. okay, so biologically a male correct. who at a per point became a transgendered female. Correct. correct. And then at another point in her life, she she became a transgendered de a trans deer. Correct. Yes. And identifies as a deer, as in a thing with antlers that frolics in the woods. Correct. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, just again, to be on. Uh, uh, just, just a second. Okay. <laughs> there we go. This is where we're going with the, with the advisory council. This is just the name. <laughs> uh, this is the bio. Steph has become a full-time streamer since her debut playing competitive collegiate Heroes of the Storm in 2016. She was one of the first trans transgender streamers to ever be partnered on Twitch and the first to bring a transgender pride flag emote to the platform. Great. Uh, her fight to Great her fight for inclusivity in. Inclusivity includes creating a competitive team composed entirely of marginalized gamers and vehemently opposes non-inclusive mechanics such as voice chat. 
Now, so, why is that? <laughs> right. This is this why is where we're going to go. Is this is the first point inclusive. we're going to tackle. I okay. So in games, I guess there's a culture in in certain games where if you're a female, um, if you're, I, I, I don't know, a minority, any in any number of things, I guess you get hate while on voice chat. Steve experienced it firsthand. Um, super common. I like it is really common, but she opposes just having the idea of it in a game at all. She was a very high level Heroes of the Storm player, like significantly very high level, like considered professional for a long time um, for, for the eight months that the game was popular, um, like very good player. And she doesn't like the idea of voice chat because she, apparently she couldn't find the mute button or something. I, I don't understand I understand that point at all. That's one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard. So that I mean, kind of catches you up. I mean, inclusive though? I don't get um, because a person can't participate? Well, I guess, but the the idea is that if you're a female, it happens to a lot, actually, a lot yeah. of females. If you're a female or, I don't know, you have a funny voice or something, people are going to poke you and prod you while you're in the lobby, right? And but they, how, do you, how do you communicate with your fellow uh, gamers or your fellow team? Uh, what's a better way than to speak? Do right. you text each other? Right. Th this is... <laughs> This is the point that, that, that everyone is trying to make. You can't possibly have a high-level game, right? The most important thing in high-level esports and it, what really separates the top five teams from the bottom five teams in most leagues is how good their communication is, right? It's why the right, Koreans right, are right. so good at League of Legends is because their communication is so much more on point than any, other, any of the other regions, right? And they're just mechanically better, too. But... It's as a high level competitive player, you have to use voice chat to do it, to do right. anything, right? If me and Steve were to play a game and couldn't use voice chat, like there would be no way we could be successful at a game whatsoever, right? It's, and the yeah, crazy no, thing about it is, the crazy thing about it is, that I remember the first time I played a Call of Duty with Zach and I mean, he's not lying. Literally, I was in my first lobby for maybe five minutes and someone dropped the hard R, and I was just like, oh, well, there's only one way to respond to this. Chat off, and I just ch I'm just chatting with, with Zach. Yeah, muted him, yeah. With Zach and him. So this is something that me and Zach have talked about, and I think it's important. I've brought it up to every content creator on here. You're, uh, we have one more interview after you, and I'm going to bring it up to you. As someone who creates content, a creative yourself, when you hear these type of things, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? First thing, <laughs> I don't think I'm allowed to say it on this channel. But <laughs> I mean, it's coming from a dear woman. <laughs> but um, I, I will just simply say that I am uh, very, very opposed to the way. Um, uh, I guess I, I don't know what the word is. A politically correctness or, or whatever has been used as an excuse to attack every facet of life. Right. And, and when, when we're talking about, like, exclusivity, like, for instance, a blind person can't enjoy YouTube. Does that mean we should eliminate YouTube? Yes. Literally every aspect of life is exclusive to someone. Not everyone can access anything. For instance, if you didn't tell that story, we couldn't have this discussion if someone didn't know what this event is or who this person is, right? So that's exclusive to them. It goes on and on and on. You could literally do that about every, you can nitpick every single thing and just rip it apart, which is why I want to flip it. And I think that really what it is, if you're not enjoying, if you personally are not enjoying it, or you can't get anything. Oh, brother. No, we can you still can't get anything. <laughs> yeah, you're good enough. No, I, I hit something. <laughs> Uh, yo, know, if you can't personally get some, get something from it, then just ignore it. Leave it alone. She can hit mute and keep playing and mm -hmm. text her buddies if she wants in Call of Duty and get killed. I'll kill her. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? Because I'm a bad player. But if she's in the middle of texting, that's on her. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like, I I don't I um I do my best not to just ignore people like that when they go on. I you know just give them the eye roll. Yeah. You go sure thing, sure thing. Mm -hmm. But it is, it's absurd. It's, it's, it's absurdity. And it's like every day we wake up to more absurdity. Just be a member of Twitter and you'll see how absurd the world can get. I love Twitter. Uh, with people nitpicking this stuff, man. I, it's a, oh, it's a terrorist organization. Jack, Jack, we love you. We'd love to have you on the show. 
<laughs> but like every time I go on it, I have feelings about something. Like they're like attacking someone, they want to cancel somebody or something. It's great. Um, it's just it's it's another world, right? Uh, it just so... shows you how depraved people are. So let this me, is just the tip of the iceberg, go for it, Zach. right? This is go just the it, tip Zach. of the iceberg of, of what's happening, right? So Twitch chooses this person, endorses this person, right? Actually, they've come out and said that they're technically not endorsing any of these people, which makes zero sense. Um, to and put them in a play, potential place of power, right? Which, okay, I don't know how you could have someone who opposes voice chat on a platform that is about communication. That part really bothers me. I, 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 I think mostly, um, but it gets deeper than this. This person uh, has a superiority complex, has a god complex, and is actively on on Twitch on her streams saying that she is going to go after people with this new position of power, and that they can't, no one can get her out because Twitch is endorsing her, and that she's unbannable, and that she cannot be be removed from the position. Twitch has come out and said that pretty much like. It is what it is, guys. You guys are going to have to deal with it. They have actually made a statement on it. That that sums it up pretty much to a T. Um, she is on um, record saying that um, there are people on the platform who should be afraid of her and that are afraid of her and that she will be coming after. Um, many occasions of this uh, on her previous live streams and especially ones recently. Uh, so yeah, 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 this is this is horrible. You know why? Because it is clear that everything she's saying should violate their terms of service, but they're not going to call her on it. Correct. Because she has like a protective status for various reasons mm -hmm. that I'm not going to say, but I think we all know what, it, what what that is. And that is totally not cool. It has to violate blatantly saying you're going after people. Yep. Like that's that's horrible. And that's bullying. That's 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 blatant bullying. I, I, yeah. I, like I'm, I'm appalled, but I'm not surprised. At that, this point, she's she's is. weaponizing being a victim. That and that's really what well, I that's see. That's what this victimology as. is, right? That's what I. Everybody that's what I a see. Victim, and then you get to shove it in your face. Now. Yeah. So uh, that's what I see this as, and I, I was thinking about this a lot today because we were going to talk about it. She is absolutely weaponizing being a victim and a marginalized person, right? So yeah. the real bad precedent that they've set here is that there have been people on the platform who have been banned and removed and um, exiled from the community for far less things than what this person has said recently, right? There are clips. I've sent Steve a number of clips about things that she has said recently, right? Within the last two, like last week since this, yeah. this post came out. And the fact that they put this person in a position of power and refuse to go, you know what, man? Sorry, we fucked this one up. We, I guess we didn't vet this person good enough. Or maybe we should go back and look at all these people, right? And have kind of just said and kind of agree with her. She's in a position of power and we can't get rid of her. That's the... Okay, so... What I think is happening is I think it is very... This is actually very similar to what's happening with The Last of Us 2. Ooh. And this is an example of what it is. So here's what it is. <laughs> People are responding, and corporations love to, because they're, you know, everything, in a corporation's eyes, the only thing they're looking for is profits and how to gain. So they always want to respond to the fad of the week. Right. Right? In this case, it's, uh, and they're like, what's the fad of the week? And they're like, the fad of the week is to have someone in charge or, or calling shots who's there, who's so woke that you can't freaking eat an orange because it's, it, it, it's disrespectful to the orange farmers who don't get a good wage or something like that. <laughs> Right, so they put they put these people in power and they go off the rails. And right, yeah. are and and I think it's all this whole thing is um it's on a, an elastic. Yeah. That right now it's it's like this, but I think there are gonna be so many mistakes similar to both this and The Last of Us that it's gonna eventually swing back. It's gonna swing back the other way where people won't care about any of this. You know, I don't think that's we're a gonna good point. end up living really in a future point. where. We have to be so woke. Woke. We have to watch every word we say. We well, you know that's a, getting to that point. That's. The, I'm, I'm glad yeah. you said that. I'm glad you said that because I, I I brought something up to Zach, but I never really got into it. So Zach Roy did a Mantis did a review of a show called Black AF, and I've told you about this show. Yes. Uh, I've gone over it to you a little bit, and I just want to get into this because this was a question I was dying. It, it ties into this. I thought your review was amazing, right? I had no. I think a good review. 
is supposed to make you interested in whatever the subject matter is. You read a review on a book, you have no interest in the book, you read the review and you're like, wow, this has piqued my interest. So when I, w- I watched the review, I was like, well, I had no idea at first that this show existed. I didn't know the guy who created the show Blackish had another show. They're both very similar. But I thought it was a pretty amazing review. I thought it really highlighted something, if you don't mind me bringing it up, you as a biracial person in America, a very your experience, right? Now, this is an experience that a lot of people don't like talking about, right? Because it's like you're either black or you're white, right? There's no in-between. And in a world of wokeness, we're fighting over we're fighting over something. And I'm 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 pulling my punches right now, but I think we're all fighting over intersectionality and who is the most important minority person or minority the, group. The victim Olympics, <laughs> as they call it. So I, I, who's I, gonna I, get the gold in victimology? <laughs> so I, I read your review and I was like, man, it's really good. Showed it to Zach. And then uh I came back to stalk you on your in your comment section, and I noticed you caught a little hate. You caught a little hate from someone in your comment section about your experience as a biracial person and not being authentic enough in the black experience to really commentate on that. Now, that's something that I know has frustrated Zach. It's frustrated a few other friends of mine as content creators, not for, you know people telling them they can't comment on something because they're not a part of it. Again, as a creative, is there an area that you ever find yourself in where you're like, you know what, I can't touch this subject because I'm, I'm not a part of this or I can't really get in? Well, I, I you know... In terms of like subject, I don't think any, I don't think it should be off limits to anyone to talk about anything. You, you know what I'm saying? Like it, there shouldn't, it shouldn't become a thing where they're like, only someone who's Jewish can talk about Israel. Only someone who's black as fuck can talk about black as fuck. You, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> it, 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 everyone should have an opinion. Everyone's opinion, opinion is valid to a point, or at least we should be able to hear hear them out, hear people out. Um. But you know what's actually funny with that comment from that lady? That is actually the first time I have experienced it from the black side, telling me that I'm not black enough to comment. Because I usually get that from white people. White people are usually the ones that go, boy, you're basically white. You're not black. <laughs> <laughs> they're usually like older people, and I'm like... <laughs> uh, yeah, um, um, but, uh, I, I, and I'm saying, like, I remember one time... I was walking down the street and I was with, uh, you know, a woman I consider my aunt. We're not blood related, but we're good friends. And, you know, the whole family were walking. And a brother's walk coming through and we give each other the head nod. And she goes, you knew him? I'm like, nah. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, giving a brother nod. And, she's like, <laughs> and she goes, he knew you were black? <laughs> I was like, you're lucky you're old and you're a good friend of my mother. <laughs> like, but, go ahead i'm sorry <laughs> in that comment in that comment the comment on my thing that's the first time that a black a black person was said yo you're too you're too light-skinned to make a comment about anything and mm. it was appalling and i didn't delete them and i didn't i didn't i didn't challenge them or whatever um and it wasn't because i don't think i i, I should have a right you know that like maybe i shouldn't speak. certainly i'm not gonna stop speaking i'm gonna keep speaking my truth um, it, it's just that, you know, you can only argue with idiots for so long. Right. And I think that for, to, to save ourselves, it's cool. They left their comment. They're speaking their truth. Let them have their thing, but we don't have to keep, um, we don't have to, um, entertaining the clown. When, Feeding when the troll. In, you know? Yeah, exactly. You know, you know, I don't even know if she's a troll. I just think that she, um, has buys into this ultra, 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 uh, everything comes down to race narrative that the world is trying to sell right now. It's very hot right now to, mm-hmm. to claim that everything is about race. Right. Um, so, uh, you know, and, and, you know, and as I, as I like to call it, you know, this is a word you might want to beep. Us mulattoes, we want race <laughs> to go away, man. Because in the, in, in, in the argument about whether you're super white, or you know, they're like, we're the whitest motherfuckers in the world. And then someone else is like, we're the blackest motherfuckers. You're about to have a race for, and I'm in the middle, and I'm like, okay, guys, simmer down. <laughs> <laughs> Let's it put doesn't this have to go down. Relax. Yeah, it doesn't have to go down like that. Man. So we want race to go away. Even Rashida Jones from from Black as Fuck, the mom. Yeah, you know she's mixed race as well, and she 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 posted something the other day on Twitter. Where it was a study about how they're saying by 2060, over 90 percent of America are going to be mixed race. Yeah. And she said, good, it's about time. Let's let's make forward progress. You're right. If we were all mixed race, we wouldn't be having these arguments. 
Right? I mean, would well, it'd be like grayer people versus slightly gray people. That's always going to be room there's to a, argue. Um, there's a Rick and Morty <laughs> episode about that. Wait, Every, wait, wait, everyone is the same. Besides, like, there's something on their back. People have squares on their back versus triangles on their back, and everyone literally looks identical. And there's a and there's a war between them. Yeah, I, I think so. Yes, I, so there, there's that episode of uh, you guys Rick and Morty fans? I am. Yeah, yeah that's that's what I just referenced. The episode of Rick right, and Morty right, yeah. where um, it's the Hive Mind episode, well, if I remember with, correctly. Yeah, with Trinity or whatever her name yes, is. Yes, yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. Yep. And, and and as soon as she gave them back their free will, they immediately have a war over who has sharp nipples or non-sharp nipples. <laughs> there you go. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. And then you realize you're like, free will is horrible. <laughs> Look what people choose to do with it. Look at what they choose to tweet. <laughs> so <laughs> so well, while, while we're, getting, we're getting into it, right, so... You, you did something that people would consider really mature. You didn't engage in the conversation. You allowed her to have it. You didn't delete it. We've been trying to get some hate comments in our thing. We've tried our best. I'm we an can't easy person get... to hate. <laughs> we, 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 I, I actually went into an alt-right group, and I was like, hey, why don't you guys come on over? Watch our show. <laughs> no, you didn't. You're kidding. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> ah, no, the, the alt-right groups, they, they they network, and Steve's name has been banned from all things alt-right after the last incident. <laughs> hey, wait, wait, wait. The lawyer said we can't talk about this. Oh, I'm sorry. Day. I'm sorry. We're still in litigation. <laughs> so I mean, it comes down to con it comes to oh, sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead, brother. Well, it comes down to your contra whether your content is controversial. And I, I, you know, no offense. I don't think you guys are very controversial. No, we you're we interesting, but you're not controversial. We agree and, with and, everyone on everything. We fold <laughs> on the press when we're out in public. I mean, it's like, like someone's like, "Are you guys Republican?" Like, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes. Abs yep, absolutely. Because <laughs> <laughs> the other time that I got racial troll trolling was yeah. when I when I called that show Star Girl racist. Oh so, yes. Uh oh, we lost Mathis to the ether. Hey, you know what? That that happens every once in a while. So we'll kind of hold so tight I, here for a second. Um, I have to look up half the things you guys are referencing because I just don't understand any of what it is. So I'm just over here typing away, over here typing away, <laughs> trying to figure out what the hell a Star Girl is. Star Girl is the uh, DC Comics publica uh, publica publication. Yeah. Publication and uh, so uh, Roy had gone, had made the assertion that Star Girl having a character named Sister Midnight or something, not Sister Mid Midnight, something Midnight. Uh, that was in fact a racist character, and uh, man, uh, his uh, his his comment section went off, and it started like most things start, like progressive uh -huh. to worse. Like so, it started off like someone was really articulate in their point, and like you know, I don't think you really grasped the source material. But that's okay. <laughs> I, I'd be willing to talk to you about it. And then as I kept reading through the comments, all right, sorry guys, we're back after some technical difficulties. Uh, Roy had to run away. For, for a few here. We're talking about Stargirl and how Steve thinks it's the best piece of cinematography to come out on television recently. <laughs> that That's true. I actually, so, you know what's I actually saw the first episode today for the first time. What'd you think? It's amazing. It's extremely <laughs> you know, it's ex <laughs> It was just killed for uh, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know here, here's the thing. It's extremely Caucasian, and sometimes the dynamics are very much for a teenage girl. Like, if I was a teenage girl, I would have a hard-on for this show so bad. It's right. very Disney Channel. It's very Disney Channel. But in terms of, like, execution, it, it's done well. It's done better than any of those Arrow shows. All right. So now that we know that you can't stick to your own opinions or anything, I'll take you back to your original opinion on, on – hold on for a second. Just, just hold on for a second. <laughs> so your review – so actually, I digress from Right. Let's not give Stargirl any free press. I'll check it out. I don't have an opinion on it yet, but I, I want to talk to you more. What of... is it? Wait, huh? super quick, super quick. I will say my opinion was that they shouldn't, they shouldn't, they shouldn't take a black person and call them, give them a code name Midnight, because that is racist. Right. That peer, <laughs> that person did not appear in the pilot. Okay. So I'm just, I'm just calling it as for a show. I'm still okay. waiting for them to introduce the racist shit. <laughs> what's You're more than likely angry. gonna happen zach is like he's gonna sit there and he's gonna see midnight come on the screen i'm like well this is not right but <laughs> just kind of sit back and enjoy the show <laughs> like, like most sjw's are gonna be like well that's terrible i'll just write an email about it <laughs> just finish this up really quickly so right so we 
tell us more about your graphic novel, man. And first, before we get there, before we get to your graphic novel, can you just give us your main influences that led you up to there? Like, who were the writers, whether they were comic book writers or novelists, graphic novelists? Who inspired you? And then tell us about the novel. Okay, I mean, in terms of, like, comic, yeah. uh, you know, uh, you know, I have to say that, like, I grew up like a Chris Claremont boy. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I was, like, a- X-Men, but, I, you know, I, when I was little, I, I mean, they were back issues at this point, but I remember collecting them. I used to love the Australian X-Men. And, I, mm. and I, you know, for any of those who knows, that's the X-Men when they were hiding out in Australia, not actual Aussie. But um, that was Chris Claremont and all these things, and, you know, he, he didn't invent, but he affected decompression of comic books, meaning instead of a comic story as one or two issues, it would be like 20 issues decompressed where you get to see emotional ties and, and make it a more real, a more adult story. Right. Um, you know, he is absolutely the top. Um, but later on, I would say that a lot of these guys later on in the future, like Mark Miller is my all-time favorite writer of comic Okay. Now, I know, you know, I know he has, there are some things that are like, He's always like he's making everything edgy and all that. You know, he's that dude. Um, but still, he he, is, he does good work. He absolutely. Does. I like Gail Simone. Um, you know, I, I like oh Scott Snyder for his whole Batman run was like right. It's it's so funny. It, it's it's a funny thing. This is I diverge, but um, I digress. But um, I'm always using words wrong. It's strange. <laughs> so Welcome to my it's life. funny that people always <laughs> argue that the creators of something should have complete control over something but if you think about it if the creators of ba- batman were the only ones to tell stories we would never have the killing joke we would never have scott snyder we'd never have these geniuses working on it. true so i i think it's kind of cool that certain things are serial i think it's cool that like spider-man has a million different writers to it because occasionally they'll be a great one all right a good point um so yeah yeah absolutely i mean i could i could list i'm probably going to leave this thing and then realize oh i forgot to name somebody um you know obviously there are great works that are you know that i've you know haven't mentioned like i think watchmen is amazing i don't love alan Moore though Uh, yo there are people (laughs) who want to lynch me right now there are people who want to lynch me right now but i think watchmen was amazing but i don't think all of his works right um you know yeah there's a there's a bunch of um and so then how did that things. how did that lead you into the graphic novel? Like what what did you draw from them? And then tell us about your graphic. Well, okay, first I got to get into like my web comic. Go for so, it. So, you know, I was living in Virginia. You know, we talked as we talked about stuff, and I was really getting into writing. And I had I had, I had written the failed science fiction novel. But you know, you you know, from your failures, you can learn more than victories. Absolutely. Um, and I definitely learned like what not to do and all things you know all, all sorts of ideas and i was like i decided that i was going to move back to new york like the center of comic i'm gonna have this but i made a vow to myself that i was like i'm gonna make it in comic books or i'm gonna die a degenerate drunk under a bridge like i'm gonna <laughs> d- a bottle of gin in one hand and just like d- dead on the floor he died right. it was it'll be christmas time and i'll be i was like that, this is happening i was like this is happening from syphilis. Uh, yeah, from syphilis or some shit. Some shit these hobos are giving each other. <laughs> so I moved back here and I started to... Uh... <laughs> uh, you know, I started... <laughs> One moment, viewers, please. <laughs> came here and i first realized you know i had to actually learn how to make comics it's very it's not easy switching from one writing to another so on my own web page i had uh you know uh, an anthology science fiction comic called romancing the cosmos great book and and now thank you thank you and that was that was really you know and anthol- yeah, you know i was trying to do twilight zone type stuff every issue one and i was just experimenting on how to letter and how to how to lay out and all things and i did this for years and then I went to Webtoon, and I did, um, you know, you know, I got some quasi success there from uh, my 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 thing about alien abductions called uh, Black Triangles, and my other one, um, which is more comical and family friendly, called Her Science. Mm-hmm. It's about a little girl who Frankenstein's her brother, um, and they, you know they get into zany adventures. 
And but I've been doing this forever. And, you know, I go every Comic Con and I, I try to keep up uh, contacts with the comic world. And I'm trying to actually be a writer. And, and, you know, right now the atmosphere has changed. And I just decided that I was like, you know what? I've done I've done small comics. I've done small runs. I've done anthology. It's time to tell the big story. Right. So I'm going to do the graphic novel. And I've had I've had this idea mapped out forever. Um, so I'm actually going to commission an artist create to create my comic and then i'm going to shop it around I, you know it's not that can you give can you give us a synopsis of, of what the story's about I, I know i don't want you to give it away can you just give us a, lo a little skeleton and don't you pull what ek did all right you give us an answer i'll tell you this <laughs> there are there are nazis oh. and there's time travel all right <laughs> and there is a catholic priest boom <laughs> Are you sold? I'm sold. I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> like, all three things that I think are dangerous on YouTube and don't get enough exposure. But speaking of dangerous things, now I got both of you psychopaths right in front of me for the first time ever, right? <laughs> Did you happen to catch our UFO episode where Zach, one of the most reasonable people I've ever met in my entire life, just completely shocked me? What is what, like most insane people shock you at a family <laughs> gathering? Like we're talking intelligently about stuff, and he's just like, "Well, yeah, I believe in aliens." And I, I look up in disgust, and I'm like, "You believe in what?" Absolutely, <laughs> and I'll, I'll stand by that. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not following what one with the other. Like, why is that? Why is that crazy? Yeah, see, that's it's crazy people that get along. I, I get it. So now that I got you both. Steve doesn't here, believe in aliens. You don't believe Steve doesn't believe, you don't believe that in there aliens? could possibly be in our ever expanding, infinitely sized universe right. another life form out there. He I does believe not... there are other organisms. I okay. do not believe that there are other sentient life forms running around kidnapping farmers and dissecting cows and drawing cleverly illustrated items in the ground. Are you serious? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Steve, <laughs> Look, Steve listen. You are you're, you're living in another world, man. He's living under a rock. A Yo, very, man, very sheltered life has rock. Just warped your mind, bro. I, I am living in a world called reality, and I'm going to ask my two close friends to come back and meet me there. <laughs> no. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> and I, I, say, I say this in, in, in the most non offensive way. I hope you are abducted. <laughs> <laughs> so that you can get a sense of reality. Bro. Oh get my god! So, but since since, since I uh, now you know me and Zach did, ep did this episode, we had a great time doing it. It was a lot of fun, right? Yeah. And I just want to give you a chance because you came at me pretty hard in the comment section. Right, that I, was like, <laughs> I want to give you a chance it. to defend it's your. True, you would have thought it would be reversed. I, you're right. It does seem like Zach would be the non-believer and you would be the believer. Why? Because um, I'm old and black, and I hang out in my basement, and I get emails about secret groups that meet on Wednesdays. What's that got to do with anything? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I just don't understand that you don't believe that aliens. Well, let, 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 let me get, let, let me get you both on the record. So I, I we're having too much fun this episode. But Zach, let, I want I never got you on the record. What is it you believe exactly by? It? Give it to me, and then I want to hear I, from. You. I believe it's impossible that there's not another uh, intelligent life form out there again in our infinitely ever expanding universe. That's what I believe. I believe right. that that the probability of us being the only intelligent life form, or, or the only only living on a planet that, that inhabits the only intelligent life form in the in the universe, I believe that is so, I, it's so fucking hard to believe for me. <laughs> That's what it is. I, I that that idea alone is so hard to believe. So let me ask you guys a question. Rory, let me give you a chance to respond to you. You also believe that the little green men are out there somewhere? So yo, I almost chose as a profession ufology. <laughs> I tried to be a, a UFO chaser. So, <laughs> um, and I believe I believe in all sorts of theories. And I've heard of our theories. So, so like and an example is like, for instance. I actually believe that a majority, my, my personal opinion, a majority of encounters with aliens are not from another planet. They're from another dimension. I'm on board. <laughs> you feel me, bro? You feel me, bro? Uh, no, I'm serious. Because what it is is people encounter these strange creatures, but there's no proof they're from another alien, uh, another planet. They don't fly the people up to other, outer space. They're just probing them or, or doing whatever. But I think these things are sliding into in dimensions, and that's that's what 
cryptics are, man. You know cryptids? Like no. Bigfoot. <laughs> Bigfoot or like any of these other guys? The Kraken? Any of that stuff ringing about? Yo, these creatures yeah. that people see and they never see again, they are slipping in from other dimensions. And then okay. slipping out. Kind of like know, that, that like that movie, The Fog, when all the uh, the big things come out of the fog and stuff like exactly, that. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but you know, I do I do believe that aliens do visit us, and I think the zoo theory is possible. You know, the, the zoo theory. No, no, please. Well, that the aliens are like we're in an intergalactic. Oh yeah, right, 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 right. Oh, I like this. Yeah, yeah I like this theory. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? And that's really what it is. Like, you know when they come down and they probe somebody and they give them a shot in the arm and they send them on their way and they're like, what the hell just happened? It's the same thing that we do with zoo animals when we're like, so-and-so ha is sick. We got to give him a flu shot. And they grab the panda and the panda's like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> we, probe, we, probe, we poke things into him and we're doing all these things. And then later, we just send him back into the woods and he's like, what the fuck just happened? And then he tells his friends, and his friends are like, you're a crazy person. <laughs> you know? That's it's the like... most sane thing I've ever heard. <laughs> All right, Steve. You know, that's what I think so it where, is. Where, Steve, where the, are the you bringing us? Where uh, are you bringing us here? Because Steve is going to, Steve does this thing where he likes to set something up and he thinks something's going to come right, right. and hits you with a left field. Where are we going with this? Are you going to ask us about about how we like our steak cooked? Where are you going with this, Steve? <laughs> no, I, I just, it's, you know, this is a, a perfect opportunity for, get me to, for me to get people on the record, right? Because I will never be able to explain to the psychiatrist who's going to take me out of here after this stuff drives me crazy. Like, no, they really said this. And Roy's got a history in our friendship, Zach, much like you do, of denying things that he has said to me. So I want this on well, the everyone record. Else, everyone else is a denier, right? You're not delusional. Oh, uh, I caught Stephen one of his denials the other day, and uh, he did not like it. No, no, no. You caught me in mis misquoting myself. Oh, so now when you do it, it's a misquote. When I do it, I'm an idiot. Got it. No, what? I got it, Steve. Don't worry. I'll see where, so where, I'll see where this where, is. Where I was trying to take where I was trying to take you you guys on this on this journey of uh, questioning about aliens and stuff like that. Because when I was reading a uh, romance in the cosmos, I could see the influence in that in that comic, and I could, I had a lot of fun. I remember the uh, the episode uh, not the episode the uh, the one comic you did with uh, with Zeus where he comes down and he's kind of like an intergalactic uh, god and he's uh, betting you know uh, uh an earthling of some sort and it just dawned on me when i realized you both were ufo psychos that's what this all is about right it's about the hope and <laughs> possibility of betting some alien and i just wanted to see if i could get you guys on the record admitting that for the first time well, jack we can start with you if you want. <laughs> is that the whole what am i female doing? alien female aliens is that what we're hoping for here i mean i'm not i'm not gonna let let the opportunity <laughs> slip if it presents itself <laughs> But that's not—it's not my entire motif here. Come on, right? Uh, I I will straight out and say that is exactly what this is. All, <laughs> all right, caught me. Do you remember the Social Network? The movie, The Social Network. Uh, never saw it, but I, heard I never it was saw it, but I know what it is. It's, yeah. So it's about the founding, creating. You know, it's a fictionalized version of how Facebook was created, and yeah. he has Facebook, and it's just—it's kind of lame phone. or whatever. It's, it starts off. And he's in there, and he's sitting around in class, and he sees all these people talking about who's getting laid and who's fucking who. And then he realizes, he's like, wait a minute. I have to have a section where people talk about their relationships, like whether they're single or it's complicated or whatever, because that's really what people want. Mm -hmm. And that's absolutely what it is. Why do we want to find other lives, you know, other, other biological entities? Because we want to know if we can sleep with them. <laughs> you know, it's like Star Trek with the green women. The green women, man. And I think it's valid. I think it's absolutely valid. You know, there's a genre of, uh, there's a subgenre of science where scientists just create weird life forms and they end up and they end up becoming a hot woman. They end up having sex with them, man. It's like a species a, or what? It's know, a whole niche. There's a, Ex so Machina is one of them. You know what I mean? He makes, a hot, he makes an AI and it's a hot chick. <laughs> What do you think that's about? <laughs> that movie Grow actually, up, Steve. <laughs> that movie I actually that movie. thoroughly creeped me out because I really did. I was still working in my prior uh, profession and I was with a client and I was like, maybe I shouldn't have taken him to see this movie. And then I realized it's always going to boil down to the rich guy held up somewhere in the jungle with the hot robot. That's, that's all it is, dude. That's what it's always going to boil down to. You know, it is my theory, and I know that I, I know that, like, you know, I have the romantic mind, and everyone's like, oh, Roy, Roy and his bitches. You know, that's not how this is. But I do believe that everything comes down to sex. Like, <laughs> maybe not everything. But what I'm saying is, because it's a drive for procreation, but what I'm saying is, 
why does man fly to the moon? So he can come back to Earth and tell chicks that he flew to the moon. Like that's, that's what it is. That's, that's all what life boils down dollars? to. So you can get better chicks than the guy who only has a hundred million dollars. Right. Yeah. Like, that's obvious. Like that's what Tesla's doing. You see Tesla, he's dating Grimes or he has a kid with Grimes now. Oh, this is all about getting chicks like Grimes. When he was younger, he couldn't bag hot chicks, weird techno techno chicks. And now that he's a billionaire, he's like, now I can sleep with whoever I want. <laughs> that's he... what this is about. That, he doesn't want to put a car on the moon or whatever. He wants to bang. <laughs> that's a good point. Well, actually, <laughs> while we're talking, I want to ask both of you guys a question. I've been meaning to ask Zach. Do you guys think that Elon Musk is having a red pill moment? Is he? <laughs> Do you know what that means? I don't, uh, I, but I, I, I can I explain. I I, uh, I like Elon Musk for many things that he does, but I think Elon Musk entirely is a fucking crazy person. <laughs> He's totally nuts. He's lost his mind. Yeah. He's lost his greedy little mind, right? Uh, um, I, I, I don't I don't understand because when I heard that he's like, it's time to take the red pill, I thought I knew what he meant. But then the internet was like saying, oh, there's all this white supremacy or, or misogynist stuff. And I was like, I didn't understand. I didn't know that they co-opted that, that matrix. Oh, so yeah. So you know, basically. I don't understand that. So the red pill being the red party is when people have a moment where they are taking the red pill and they are awakening from their blue liberal state of thinking. Now, this is a very dramatic way of saying that I have shifted from one political ideology to another, and they've turned it into a whole movement, which is a, a show we can do all in itself. But while I got you here, you brought up The Last of Us, and I just want to, like, I want to ask you a question. Have you, what, do you play video games, Ray? So, yeah, here's the thing. I do play video games. However, uh... You know, because of like, you know, both creating comic comics and all these, I always have to keep a day job. Like, you know, I work, I'm, I'm working as a cook, right? Um, but like, I play probably two or three games a year, and they have to be like good. They have to be games like I. Okay. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're, they're, they'll be like a title, like you know, like big ones were like the Arkham series of Batman. Very good. Or, or um, I really like Far Cry. Mm, because I like that first person shooter, but I like the RPG aspects of it. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, I like Fallout. I, I like Fallout or, or like Oblivion. Not Oblivion, but all, all the all other the scrolls. scrolls. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Great things. series. But I don't play everything. Like, you know how like Sully just plays everything? He somehow has time to play everything. I, I, I don't <laughs> I don't have time to play everything. I just have to hear about it. Okay. So, I'm, I'm... Um, so I I do play, but I'm not a g I wouldn't call myself a gamer. It's not fair to call me. Let me ask you a question. Let me let me ask a follow up question. I want Zach to chime in on this one. What do you think of the stories in video games, and where would you like to see them go? What could we do to if if it was up to you, what would you do to make the stories more immersive? So the re the reason I'm not really into first person shooters is because I'm I'm there for the story. You know, I play Arkham because I want to see Batman and stuff. And so when people are like, "Yo, we're playing the multiplayer," like for instance, Grand Theft Auto V is one of my favorite games of all time. Thank you. Not because of the multiplayer. <laughs> Everyone loves the multiplayer. I'm actually all about the story. I like. I think the story of Michael and Trevor and Franklin is like one of the greatest crime stories ever told. Don't ruin it for Steve. Steve has just started playing it. Okay. <laughs> is Steve a hate a secret hater? Is that what's no, happening? No, 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 no. He never played it before, and I've been for months trying to convince him. Uh, Epic Games just released it for free on the Epic Game Store. Steve picks right. it up, and I've been trying to convince him to like sit down and actually play it because I, I, I think other than Mafia Two, maybe it is maybe the greatest crime story ever told in a video game. I think absolutely. I think I think it, I think it competes with what we see on. on the, I think it competes with The Godfather. It competes with Goodfellas. It's really? amazing. It's very good. I, yeah, it just. I think people don't. You know, people don't have time to play video games, which is why Goodfellas. You know, Goodfellas two hours. Uh, you know, um, uh, The Godfather three hours. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying you need like a hundred plus hours to experience the story of Michael. In Theft Auto Five, so a lot of, that's why people yeah. won't let it compete. But it's a great story. It's an amazing it's... story. It's really good storytelling. So I think it is there. I think good writing, yeah. and good storytelling is absolutely in in video games. I'm glad well, you said I that because I had... Steve was going to go into a direction of he thinks that the storytelling in video games right now is, is subpar. 
And, and no, I think I, I, yeah, absolutely, because you said, where do you want to see it go? Where do you want to see it progress? Where do you want to see it? I think right now we're in the golden age of stories and video games, right? Why was The yeah, Last of Us yeah. so well perceived? Because it was such an emotional story, right? right Horizon Zero you're not Dawn. Get multiplayer out. You're right. gonna love the story. You're gonna love you the story. That. The Fallout games, the story, the stories are very good if you actually pay attention to what's going on. And that's why seventy six wasn't good, right? Because it didn't have a story, right? And, you and, know, they, they forgot it was about the story. I think that game was intentionally bad. I could I could talk for hours uh, on on the down the shortcomings of Fallout seventy six, um, but video games right now are in a really 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 good spot both multiplayer and story honestly when you play through grand theft auto 5 steve we're gonna have to we'll sit down and have a conversation about it but i there's a reason why like and when you started playing again i started playing it again or when you started playing i started playing it again i've i've played through grand theft auto 5 i think this would be time number four or or, or five there's a reason why i go back and play this game so much like every other year or so every other year or so i i like the game so much that i have to go back and play and i always remember where i am in the story you know, Wait, another uh, great, a great one, which Steve actually you might like because we used to live in the Heights, is the Ballad of Gay Tony, right? Number four, it's yeah. The expansion pack for number four, Ballad of Gay Tony is about a. It sounds like you're like the Ballad of Gay Tony. It's about the right hand man to Gay Tony, who's a, who's a freaking Dominican who lives in the Heights, and it's about him trying to make it as a criminal. Yep. And you very love good. It, actually, it's amazing. It's GTA amazing. Four, I think, very close up to. GTA Five. I thought they they I struck agree, I agree. they struck gold twice back to back. I actually like the driving right. mechanics in GTA Four a little bit better than Five. Though. So what does San Andreas yeah. fall for you two guys? San Andreas is up there, but it's I like I would like for them to remaster that game um, because I think with the the storytelling and the development of, and what Rockstar has now that they could right. really really kill the story of CJ. Okay. I, yeah, I, I hate to say it, that because the newer one. Mm-hmm. Four, like four and five, are so good, and they mimic the city so good. Like yes. I'm saying, when you play the Gallery of Ballad of Gay Tony, it is the it is Washington Heights. You were there. Oh, it's dude! Well, I, I was playing the it's opening crazy. cut and uh the other uh, last night, and when we were dr- when you know we were trying to get away with Franklin in the car when they first boost the cars, uh, the the or whatever. Yeah, yeah and uh, there was a part. Well, this was a little weird. They started off on like the PCH in uh near Santa Monica yeah. uh, Beach. And yeah. then they almost instantly ended up in like Westwood. <laughs> I'm not right, Westwood, yeah. but Los Angeles. But when I was driving through, I was like, "Wow, this is really that part of Hollywood Boulevard." I know where they are right now. Yes. It's not obviously Hollywood. They did a really good job. Very good. So yeah, pulls you right you know, in. There are times in there is a time in four that I would go and be like, "Let me see if my high school is around," and I would go find it. You know, I was like, "The building that's supposed to be my high school." It's it's great um, yeah, because that. they have that. The young, the younger versions of Grand Theft Auto, I just I like, but I I can't like them as much as as, as advanced as it is now. Yeah. Because it's better story, it's better it's better submerging. You're just in it, you know what I mean? Like. Yeah. It's great. No. So I thought I thought I was gonna get negative points for not being a true gamer. No, 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 no. Now honestly, gonna... if if you play video games, you're you're a gamer. You're a gamer, right? Like, I don't think that distinction is something that needs to be made in any facet, any, you know, I'm a car enthusiast, right? But it doesn't make me a race car driver, right? That's a right. Be- that's a better line to draw, right? If you play games, even just casually, even twice a year, you're a gamer, right? You're yeah. the guy who's going to hit the big ones. Yeah, you're a gamer for sure. Yeah, yeah I mean, there's for me, there are events. Yeah. Because I can't play all the time. There are events. Right. And when a game is coming out, I'll, I'll know what's coming. I was like, yo, I'm going to buy this game. I'm going to sit every time I have a free time, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to work through this. Yeah. And like really just yeah. build your life around it. That's the same thing I tell Zach about being a part of like this. So our channel is dedicated to almost everything nerdum. I think that's actually used to be in one of our, our like uh, descriptions or something like that. I think, like, it's, on we I think it's on the website. Yeah, it's on the website. And one of the things that I've been trying to get Zach to embrace, even though he hates Star Wars, which is totally fine. Easy thing to hate. I've been trying to like. It always comes back to this. <laughs> I never trying... know why either. I don't hate it that much. <laughs> I'm trying to usher him into because uh... I love it. So he's trying to provoke me. <laughs> <laughs> into, like, it's a true, it's a true, true geekdom. The closest I've ever seen Zach going to true geekdom was it doesn't almost doesn't count because it was such a great movie. But we went to go see the Joker, and I remember after we left, that was the first time Zach I've heard you talk about Call of Duty and stuff like that. But that was the first time I've seen you nerd out on, 
<laughs> on something nah, before. That just, RuneScape that, probably probably would have come before that. No, but I've never seen you nerd. I, but prior to that moment, I've never seen you nerd out on RuneScape. When I see you playing RuneScape at work, you look kind of violent and almost crazed. That's not nerding out to me. <laughs> Same thing to me. <laughs> right. I got to ask you a question. We've known each other for a lot of years, but I want to know the thing you exclusively like. What is the thing you nerd out on the most? Like, what draws you in? You're like, I have no time for anything else when I'm dealing with this medium. What is it? What is it? I mean, it comes and it goes. And sometimes it's Star Wars. Sometimes it's Star Trek. And Star sometimes Trek. it's just comics in general. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I would say I get the most emotional about uh, comic books. And I think that's why I'm very critical of comic book movies. That sometimes when they get something wrong, I'm like, I'll leave a theater and be like, that was not Hawkeye's costume. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> like, you know, like, what, like, you know, like, it's, it drives me nuts. It drives me, it drives me, was it so hard? Was it so hard to give him his <laughs> Was it so hard? Um, uh, or, or like, Scarlet Witch isn't wearing a TR. Like, that stuff will drive me nuts. <laughs> um, but I I, 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 I feel both Star Wars and Star Trek. I could probably t I talk, you know, I'll nerd out with people. Although, like I was saying earlier, the hardest fans are Star Wars. The Star Wars community on, on the internet is not feeling me. They think no. I'm like a poser. And they're like, Fuck you, bro. I'm like, I've been watching so as a kid. Man. <laughs> did you get? Uh, uh, did you hear about the Zach, uh, the Snyder cut? Obviously, you did. Oh, you did a video. You did yeah, a video. Yeah, I, did, I, did a, I did a video on. Um, I'm going to be talking about that for a while. Super. It's so weird. I think because I would say that like, I, there was a time where I was, I was a hater of Snyder. Right. But I was like, he messed everything up. But now that I see it in hindsight, I was like, those movies weren't horrible at all. They were just different. Yeah, they were. They poorly received. Zack Snyder yeah. was the director of uh, Man of Steel. Which I thought was good. Did you ever see Man of Steel, Zach? What, Man of Steel is what? Uh, Superman. It's a Superman movie. No. Dark Superman. No, no, no. no. It's <laughs> Henry Cavill or, or No, or never saw it. I'm looking up his uh, his stuff here. Uh, Dawn of the Dead looks like uh, the only thing I've seen. Of, that was a great movie. Dawn of the Dead was great. Um, let me see. That's the only thing I've seen by this man. Dude, did he make Sucker Punch? Who made Sucker Punch? He made Sucker he Punch, made Sucker yeah. Punch. He made Sucker Punch. He did um, 300. He did Watchmen. I actually love the movie. I love it. Yeah, it's a great movie. 300 is an amazing movie. Wait, you weren't. 300? Uh, what else did he do? Didn't he do like a dating movie with epic explosions and stuff like that? Was it? He no? did a he did a short in My Chemical Romance. So this guy's my hero. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like for instance, yo, a comic book thing that drove me nuts was I can't stand the Umbrella Academy on Netflix. Because I'm such a fan of the comic, they change so many subtle things that I'm like, they do not understand the Umbrella Academy at all, which is written by the front man from My Chemical. Oh, okay. oh that's, the, that's the book he yeah. wrote. Yeah, that's the book he wrote. That's and cool. It, the book, the book he wrote is so. Here's what it is: the book he wrote is a pure comic book. Mm. There's time travel and magic and weird science and weird things and aliens and all these wonderful things. And the Netflix original series stripped it of all that beautiful and they were like let's make it more realistic i don't want to see realistic i want to see weird shit go on you know this is my, you know so i remember like everyone's like what everyone loves that series all right I can't watch it i made it through two episodes and i was like man actually i've been watching uh breaking bad again because this guy started watching breaking bad i was actually gonna, I, I was just gonna get into that i was gonna get into I, that I am convinced i'm gonna take us into our rapid fire moment because we're all three guys that enjoy things intensely God. Zach, give me your three top top three shows ended perfect. The th three television shows that had the best ending? No, ended perfectly. Not best ending. Not better than other shows, but came to their natural conclusion. You were like, this show ended well. Um, the Sopranos, I think, is is number one. Um man, I don't watch that many TV shows. It's it's this is this is a very hard thing for me. Um <laughs> Honestly, I try to. I I don't I don't know. I, I watch so little TV shows, and I have such a bad memory for um, media that, that this is a really hard question. Um, Sopranos, I think, ended perfectly because it ended the exact way that it started. I think it was a perfect ending. Um, Trailer Park Boys, I think, ended really well. Um, 
even though they made an animated series that I don't believe exists. Um, <laughs> and Is that true? They made an animated season uh, because the, the actor who played Jim Leahy passed away. But wait, you don't believe it exists? Is it... I just I, I refuse to believe that that exists. <laughs> he doesn't acknowledge it. I will, will not acknowledge it. Oh man, I'm trying, I'm trying to think. Now that's it. That's all. I, I don't watch many TV shows. It's it's all impossible right. for me to even answer this question. Mick, give it to me, Mirrors. Top three came to their best natural. Con- Do animated series? Yes. Okay, so I got it. I got I got one. <laughs> so we got Matt. We got Mad Men. Right. Right. That's on the list. We have, um, we have Star Trek: Deep Space Nine. Oh, oh, okay. Good. I'll t- I put that yeah. on my list too. And, Good. Okay, okay. And then, and then finally, Justice League Unlimited. The animated that, series. That did end extremely well. Very good. Okay. Yo, I rewatch that series all the time, and when it ends, I tear up. I'm like, oh my god, mm. it's ending. And you know, they have this beautiful thing that after they've saved the day from Brainiac and Lex Luthor being combined and do all this stuff, and then Superman gets to go ham on Death, uh, Dark Side and all this stuff. I remember that. Europe, yeah. They they do this wonderful part where it shows the halls of justice, and they hear an alarm, and they're like, "There's trouble in the city," and they have every character who's ever appeared running out down the stairs and you have this heroic moment where you're watching every one of them and i just tear up I'm like, they're true heroes man <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's great that's funny. i would it's really, I, great. it's really good i would have to say mine are uh, definitely starting with breaking bad there is no okay. show in my mind that i can take seriously that has ended perfectly like breaking bad now i know i'm amp- perfectly i th- i know i'm amping up but i'm talking about yeah it literally. We're gonna have to talk about this show because I'm I'm at a point where I don't think I I even want to go forward anymore. You gotta push on, man. <laughs> you gotta push wait, on. Wait, hold on. Are you? Did you just watch the fly episode? What's the, the fly f- episode? Is the worst episode. <laughs> no, I am. Uh, <laughs> I'm in season three. Um, it's the episode. The episode. It's the episode where Skylar just cheated on Walt. Well, she always shits on him. She's a mean wife. No, no, no. Cheated uh, on him with, she, with, 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 uh, with her bosses. She said, he said shitted on him. With, with her, with her boss at Bennigan's or whatever. Oh yeah, the right, guy right, with right. the heated, the guy with the heated floors, right? Oh god. Sure. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, um, I don't even know if I want to go. That made me so mad that I'm like, I don't fucking, I don't oh, even yeah. want to watch the rest of this shit. I don't care anymore. So Breaking Bad, 100 percent ended extremely well in my opinion. Then I would have to say the next one is and this is one that's not popular. I think that Star Trek Next Generation ended extremely well. You one were of able my to favorite. sit through all of Next Generation. That's impressive re- among in itself. No, I, listen, not only was I able to sit through it, I sat through it and it's like heyday. Not reruns. I watched all those <laughs> things on UHF, trying to hit that little dial to make the channel come in perfectly. And then I'm gonna say the last show that ended perfectly for me, and Roy's gonna disagree with me off the bat, was Angel. Angel came. T- <laughs> I don't disagree. I love the ending of that show. <laughs> but the reason that, the reason that I ask those questions is because we're we're all guys that really appreciate something coming to its best conclusion. Right. So, let me ask you a question, and I can get you on a record of this. Wait, before you do this, I want to reminisce about Angel. Really. <laughs> <laughs> what is? It? I don't even know what this is. And th- this is the essence. Don't of tell him. Zach is just going to make fun of us. Let him find it off screen, and then it's right, not as gonna... po- it's, it's not as po- but, <laughs> but yo, um, is this the spinoff of the... Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Yeah, it is. It is. It is way better. Than Buffy. It's way better than Buffy. <laughs> yo, the fact that they killed spoiler alert Wesley Wyndham Price, and the way yeah. he dies is so. Romantic. I don't know who you're spoiler yeah. learning it for. I'm never gonna fucking watch this garbage. <laughs> well, viewers, maybe viewers haven't seen this. It came out in '99. If they, if they haven't seen it by now, they can have it spoiled. Holy shit! Yo, so yo, the way he dies is so romantic and cool. And yeah. the fact that the rest of the team they're in the alley. Yeah. And the army of uh, the army of of the dead are coming to them, yeah. and they're like they're gonna go out fighting. Is amazing. That is amazing. And you know what's crazy. I, I it's crazy because uh, it ends, and much like uh, Trailer Park Boys, like so. Josh Whedon went for the. I know maybe he didn't go for the money grab, but he released the comic books after it ended, 
and just talk about ruining a good thing. I never read it, but I've read the reactions of people who were just like, what is this nonsense? I got to ask. Because it ended question. perfectly. You don't need more comments. No, you, you don't. I, here's the crazy thing about that, and this is something that I've always wanted to ask people who work. Wait, who who writes who writes Saga? Who writes uh, Why the Last Man? Our, uh, that I don't know, but I know our, our number one fan, who I promised I was going to give a, sh- a shout out to, Billiam, reads Saga, and he loves that book. We love you, Billy. I Thanks love that book. I love that book, and I love Why the Last Man, and I love X Mac, and it's a different X Mac, but he writes a comic. But in, in a great interview, he actually once said he's like because his comics always come to him. It's uh, he, Brian he, he Vaughn. Like, I, yeah, Brian, Brian Vaughn. Vaughn. He he was like, yeah, Brian K. Vaughn. He was like, he was like, I don't understand why Spider Man going on and on because we're taught in writing school stories have beginnings, middle, and end. Right. They should come to an end, and I, and I totally feel him. That's why his books are so good because he actually prepares people for a f- epic end. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Meanwhile, like Spider Man or X Men will go on forever. Yeah, the characters will are immortal and will live forever. But really, you should prepare people. But anyway, no, it, you it, no, it, no, it's true. But as someone that's like writing yourselves, like writing yourself, let me ask you this final question: Where do you see? And when I say final question, final question on this comment on this t- topic, where do you see your storylines going? Like, do you have like a grand? idea of where the universe comes to an abrupt end or is it something you want to keep going for as long as possible you mean in life like how am i gonna die no i'm not going to die i'm gonna live on forever bro i'm talking about like superman and absorb the sun (laughs) we're gonna edit that part out so the doctors don't come get you (laughs) actually actually I'll, i'll tell you that although I was just praising Brian K. Vaughn for, for, for the ending, and it makes sense because you want to write these graphic novels to end all these things. However, originally, Romancing the Cosmos was originally perceived to be an endless story. Mm-hmm. And one of the reasons why I had to do an anthology is the way that I do the comic is I have models, photos of models. And, and, and you know, I'm a digital artist, so I would digitize them into comic books. Right. The problem is, is I couldn't keep the model. The models couldn't keep coming, coming back. They were always at other. Sh- um. So I had to make it an anthology. But honestly, I actually craving writing an endless story. I would love to write forty issues of any comic, because it would be so much fun to just keep, keep going. And we're like, what's next? What's next? And not even prepare for it. You know what I mean? It would be amazing. I kind of like, I like fun concept to do at least. No. Uh, you, you know what I'm saying? Um, but, but yeah, most of my stories have an end, and, and you have to, you know, I think it's very important. You know, when you finish a movie or a story and it kind of sucks at the end, and you're like, yeah. what the hell was that? Um, really, you have to prepare for an ending. Right. You have to, and, and yeah. not enough people. And so when I'm writing a story, when I'm doing a thing, I have the ending clear. I know how they're all going to end. The, the middle is the hardest part. Mm. But you should definitely, and while you're doing it, you you know, you make notes and storylines. You should prepare for that ending. And too many times, a lot of times when shows are coming to the end, they wrap it up real quick. Well, that was, you know. Yeah, a lot of times of when shows something. come to an end, it's the the end isn't written, but forced upon, you know, yeah. the writers. And yeah. and um, you see that happen a lot in sitcoms. Sitcoms get yeah. oh, canned. Right. They're like, fuck, yeah. we, got, we got tied all together, right? And and that's yeah they got to tie really it together good. and they quickly wrap it up and you're like well, well he becomes a doctor in one week I don't understand like, <laughs> or, or, or like she falls in love in ten minutes like she she's known this guy this whole time and she falls in love in ten minutes what's going on that's yeah so they, they wrap they're like wrap it up wrap it up that's or it turns out he was in a he was in a coma and there were no zombies for oh like. oh that, that would actually be a great ending to that horrible show <laughs> well, do you do you watch Walking Dead at all Zach? Uh, I've seen the first. What was the what was the prison season three four? That was like two. Season, yeah, season two. two. That was a great. No, season. no, no. Two was the farm. Prison was no, three. But it started out. Oh, you're right. It is three. Yeah, yeah. 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 I stopped at the midpoint of season three because I thought the prison was the prison season was so bad. I could not subject myself to that any longer. Dude, you know what's crazy about you know what's crazy about Walking Dead. Is you talk about a good thing going on too long. So they peaked 
right a while ago and then they brought the negan situation in and then they got people to start watching it again and then we all came back i'm i'm including myself in this and i realized something this story was going to come to an end in the comic books long before the show was going to come to an end mm -hmm. because they were going to keep going for ratings for as long as possible absolutely and i think right. i think the uh probably the, the most gangster thing i've ever seen in popular culture the author of the comic said, oh, yeah, we got a great big issue eight coming out. Make sure you tune in. Zach, the guy came up with boards for it, right, of okay. what the next issue is going to be. And it's like going into issue seven. Goes into issue seven, ends the book. Totally ends the book, wraps the whole thing up. And I thought it was perfect. It was amazing mm -hmm. how they did it. They even, like, he even timed So he up. psyched us out into thinking, uh, he th you know, he thought yeah. Robert Kirkman yeah. psyched you out into thinking there would be a next graphic novel. And what it is. <laughs> no. Okay. No. And I, I, thought it was, I thought it was absolutely perfect. Respect. I, I respect. And then it's just funny because we <laughs> we're watching the show now, like, drag on. All, two of the major stars have left the show, right? They might appear the back whole, in the movie. Here's the thing. The story was about. The sheriff and his family, and so far they have killed off him and his entire family. So what the hell is the point of watching this? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, see, when shows go on too long, um, and there is no clear end in sight, and they're gonna have to, I don't even know, make it up in some fashion. Uh, Game of Thrones hit this, I, I believe. Um, you, you know, that's how you ruin a really good thing. The first few yeah. seasons of The Walking Dead at the time were the best thing on television, like yep. hands down, right? And then you get into these long drawn out seasons and, and episodes and plot lines and this person has to die to make it make it exciting again, right? That can't be the way that you tell your story, right? Everyone knows that if your middle is going on too long, no one cares when that end is coming. They want out. Yeah. And right. that's where they see The Walking Dead go bad. And, and actually, here's my writing advice for anyone who's watching in, in the writing or, or you guys. You have to remember, it's like a movie or anything like that. People will remember more than anything else how it ends. Mm -hmm. And if your ending sucks, you have a bitter taste about it. Think about a Game of Thrones. It was amazing for seasons, and they sucked the last, like, one could argue the last season. Fine, the last season sucked. But that's all people want to talk about, how horrible it ended. They feel yeah. so betrayed. If you walk out of a movie, you know, a movie can suck the entire way, but if the third act is good, people are like, well, that was good. They'll walk out smiling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. You know, so, yo, remember to make your endings good, man. Yeah, absolutely. I feel you. I feel so, you. last thing I'm going to say, right, before we wrap, I, I, I'm, I'm going to get you on the record, but I'm going to defend it here, right? So, I listened to a really, really good review about the... <laughs> The rise of Skywalker today, right? And it wasn't a good review in a positive light. It was a good review in the sense that it basically gave us all the information we needed to know. Where do you think they went wrong in this new trilogy, Roy? Okay, so I am gonna say <laughs> that I'm actually a fan of Rise. Of Zach, uh, cut his um, mic off, and let's just go ahead and wrap this right. <laughs> Wait, right. I mean, basically the way I see it is you are either a Last Jedi fan or you are Rise of the Skywalker. And I'm on Rise of the Skywalker. Okay. Because the two movies try to contradict each other. Right. The whole thing. And I actually, I, I another thing that I do, because I like edit, I like edit, is I've created, I haven't finished it. But on the, on the, like on the docket is to create an edit to rectify certain things you can't rectify everything but there's an edit of last last jedi that i think i can fix so no problem. <laughs> egotist me egotist me right and one of the the major problem i think is not revealing that the emperor was behind everything in and i actually feel that the emperor reveal should have been at the end of the film. that's a good point yeah, yeah, I th honestly feel that the audience would have time to sit on that. But that, that the, you know, in the opening scene, not the entire opening scene, but the part where he's actually in the temple and he, he confronts the uh, emperor and the emperor is just, uh, he's like, I killed Snoke and I'll kill you. And then the emperor, I created Snoke. I've been every voice inside your head and all that crazy stuff. That should have been at the end of The Last Jedi. Right. 
And if people saw that, because, you know, Snoke dies in it, and then we get to see that the Emperor is really behind the whole thing, the entire thing, I think people would be able to deal with it. All right. Yeah, certainly. But, That's where but, I think they majorly went wrong, but they made other other mistakes. They, sh- you know, they disrespected the cast immensely. Right. So, like, what it is is, like, Han Solo and Slayer were there to talk, teach us to believe in love. <laughs> right? He's a space pirate womanizer, and she's a princess, and they have this aggressive aggressive thing, and then they love each other, and it's all great. And then when they decide to give us Disney uh, Star Wars, they're like, by the way, he abandoned her, <laughs> and he let his son turn to the dark side, and they're divorced now. And I'm like, fuck you. Fuck. And then space when they're like, look at me. Yeah, and, that, and, and then card? they have like, <laughs> no. And, and they have Luke, who's like Luke, who's like the he, the main hero, and he resisted killing his own father, who is a horrible, horrible monster. He's killed millions of people. He resisted the dark side. And then they're like, they try to make him almost like in Last Jedi, like where he's like a child molesting creep. <laughs> Here's what I was like: it, he he has, wasn't a child molesting creep, but it was a metaphor for being a child one. Like, the, his fight with his nephew is that he's standing over his nephew sleeping with his lightsaber out. What do you think that's a metaphor for? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> like, disgusting. <laughs> horrible. Horrible, man. <laughs> you know, I mean... they're, they're going to disrespect. They should. And that was another mistake. They should not have disrespected their original thing. Like, yo, Han, Han and Leia's love should look compacted and awesome. And and, and uh, Luke should have just been the epitome of a good guy. You know what I mean? Either have him fall to the dark side or have him be a good guy, but don't put some gray air where he was just like a bad uncle. I, I, I know that. I, you know, I think that... I that think was that the sentiment of a lot of fans. Yeah. Right. But it, that scene is... You have to admit, that that is a creepy scene. <laughs> that he's like standing <laughs> over his nephew while he sleeps with his lightsaber out. I'm like, what the hell? I was trying on? to... I was trying to like find a picture so I could send it to Zach so I can give some context to this, but it is, it's a widely accepted theory like on the internet. That, like I remember after the movie, the first time I saw it like premiere, I wasn't out of that theater for like 20 minutes before someone had somehow had like a bootleg screen capture. And they're like, did anyone else find this scene troubling? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you're not so- the first one to say <laughs> So yeah, they're bad parents. You know, Luca, uh, Han, and, uh, Han and Leia are bad parents. They ship their kid off to their uncle, and then he ends up on the dark side, and he fucking hates everything. He's destroying it. Why do you think that is? What did his uncle do to him? <laughs> I think he was just negligent, right? He he is negligent in the actual story, but it feels like a metaphor for something. <laughs> I mean, we need to talk to J- Ryan Johnson about what he. Was. So it was not a good. It was a good official. <laughs> In closing, I'm going to ask this. This is it. This is the the last one I want to get you on the record for because I've had too much fun tonight. We've gone like way over, but I need to I'm know. I'm having a blast. I could go. <laughs> I, could go I could go longer. I, I'm fine with going longer. We could talk, we could talk forever. All right, cool. Then, then, then this isn't the last question. So I want to know about. So here's the funny thing Zach doesn't know, but it's pretty cool because Roy brought it up. So we actually, the three of us, started YouTube, our YouTube journey, at the same exact, nearly the same exact time. Yeah. And uh, the backstory on me and Zach's situation was Zach has been streaming for a long time, and you've had how many YouTube channels? Oh, my God. More than I could count. And you've been doing it for how long? Uh, I'm going back to look that up. I, I think my first video was uploaded 2009 or something. So he, he's a he's a gritty grizzled internet vet i heard someone that's, say that the other day and i can't stop saying it now because i was like that's the best way to describe that is the how, I, how that is me yeah. so tell us about the first video you ever did right tell us about your first youtube video and if you can go back in time what <laughs> what would you do different well, actually <laughs> unfortunately i have to say that i think i already talked about it when you were wrangling with yes me. Kids. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, tell me about. He it. did. It, it was. Uh, it was a very good story. If you want to give, if you want to give Steve the short of it, I'm sure. I'm sure that'd be fine. Well, yo, it was. It was so basically. It was, it was actually on Facebook that I put up, and ultimately it, it comes down to this. There were three stories. I was half awake. I was drinking my coffee, and I'm watching the news, and the news just had three stories, and every one of them pissed me off. Like, 
every one of them. I was like, <laughs> and yo, so I immediately started filming myself as a gag, and I just put it on. It was me bitching. It was it was like two minutes long. I put it up there, and it, the stories were the w- ladies' woman soccer parade. I think they were getting like a half-ass parade, and then it was like it was Epstein, and then it was the story of that guy who the old guy who dropped his fucking grandson off of a fucking uh, cruise ship and had the audacity to blame the cruise cruise yep. ship. He later on was trying to sue them and be like, "Well, they, it, things weren't safe." He's like, "Why wasn't the window fastened fastened enough? Why would you allow me to dangle my child, my grandchild, out of the?" I assume I assume the child died, right? Correct. Yeah, d- 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 yeah. And, and and whatever, and like the whole thing. When I heard heard that, my my blood was boiling, and I just did this story. I pulled out my cell phone and I said, "You know, welcome to morning reflections." And I just started shitting some shit out. Two minutes, put it up. Suddenly, I got so much response. These are friends. You can't always trust your friends. I agree. <laughs> and they said they want to see more of it. And I was like, okay. And I just kept putting up stuff. And I was like, you know what? I might as well put this. Um, but uh, since then, I've I've truly altered. I've truly trained. I've had to learn editing as I go around. I really love editing. This is <laughs> um, you know, I already have my like my YouTube. Uh, no names mentioned, but like YouTube Muse. I have a YouTube Muse that I'm like, this person is so good at YouTube. Uh, I wish I was a fraction as as good as them. But Come like, on, I keep trying, I'm trying Give to up my ante. Up, up my, uh, I'm up in my ante in terms of both editing and content. And I'm not trying to be like this person because their their channel is totally different, realistic. But like I'm just saying, like um, who is it? Uh, I, I'm not saying. <laughs> 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 you feel me, Chief? I'm not saying, but well, like I said, you we should you shouldn't for starters. On your YouTube, you should not mention other YouTubers because it can be received as bullying, and your channel could. Be... True story. Did you get a? Did you get hit? Did someone say, accuse you of bullying? No, that's no, a, that's I'm a common that thing that that YouTube on. does. Um, really? it, it, yeah. Twitch does the same thing. You, uh, as a Twitch affiliate, as a Twitch partner, you can't talk bad or even really talk in any any sort of could be perceived as negative light as, as another partner or affiliate streamer they will kick you off the platform right. yeah really wow Which is why you should other other than joe rogan you should not be mentioning any other any <laughs> other youtubers you know what i'm saying like, <laughs> because, they can, and because they can hammer you with it and i actually hear stories of people where they say things that are not bullying at all but they've been blamed for it like the yep. YouTuber didn't like it, and they're like, "I blame you for bullying," and yep. then they go after them. It has absolutely happened. Oh man! Yeah. That, so... so you're gonna have you're gonna have to take me to a bar and get me drunk to hear who my <laughs> YouTube is. I'll do. I'll do we that. Can, for free. Yeah, we can make that happen. Did, I need to send I'm Zach. I'm going to fish kill. I need to send Zach your episode. You got to explain this to me, but I need to send him your episode on the Taylor Swift. What's what's going on there, big guy? You did you explain to me? What she's doing to you and how long she's been victimizing you, Zach. Apparently, <laughs> See, this is the problem. This is the problem. Everyone looks at it and they're like, "Why are you bullying uh, Taylor Swift?" For no, starters, I know, I know she's bullying you, but I just want you to explain it so Zach can understand. For starters, she is the most powerful. She's one of the most powerful women in the world. There's no way I'm bullying her. I have 120 subs, 122 subs. There is no way I'm bullying her. <laughs> Taylor Swift is at home right now going, God, that fucking Mantis guy. He keeps coming at me and I don't like it. Right. How could I get to him? How? Here's the short of it. I I did a, in my early days, I did a pseudo documentary about her and her connection to Satan. Okay. I like where this is going. So, so have you heard this, Zach? Have you heard this whole theory? No, no, no. I I haven't, but I I like just the start of it. I like okay, the, I, so I love the beginning. Here's the deal. So our girl, Tay Tay Swift, most powerful bitch on the planet, right? <laughs> she um she is absolute spinning image of the former head of the church of of uh, of Satanism. And even down to her voice. Her name was Xena Shrek. I think Shrek or, or whatever I have to, I have to she is, and you know, people have talked about their life. She's just like her, just like her. 
So I decided to do some research and I was looking into it. And basically the concept is Taylor Swift is a clone <laughs> of Xena. And Xena, Xena is the daughter of the former head, the founder of the Church of Satan. Oh, this is absolutely true. This is true. This is this is factoids, man. Then if you watch her videos, she has hidden satanic messages within it. And she actually has one video that it shows that she is a clone. I'm deadly serious. Look, yo, watch, look what you made me watch, look what you made me do. Just watch it. Just watch it. I tell me that think isn't I can she I, is, I can do that. You don't have to you don't have to do that right now, but I'm saying, you know, you ever <laughs> listen to that woman's music. Do I, so, I'll, <laughs> go I ahead, continue to follow that. I continue to update people because it is very true. So here's basically the concept. So the the the, the head of the Church of Satan, uh, he decides to have a kid. And when he wants to have a kid, he does it ritualistic. And he has a ritual that summons Satan into him. So that when he bangs his wife or his woman or whatever his partner is, I don't I don't know anything about her mom. <laughs> that that it's filled with the seed of Satan. So then his entire entire life, this this girl Zena, he tells her that she is going to inherit the Church of Satan and it's so important. So he makes her the head of the Church of Satan. And she's into it for a while, but event she does all the interviews, she's on talk shows. Eventually she she is like, I don't want this. My father's a lunatic. I quit. She changes her name. Renounce Satanism and leaves. So she was supposed to be the Antichrist. She has failed it. However, they have made clones of her to take over her place. Now, if you, <laughs> you know, and, and they activate their first one, which is Taylor Swift. Now, Taylor Swift seems like a normal girl from the South who's just a country singer. One of her first major boyfriends was one of the Kennedy. Now, I don't know if you know, but the Kennedys are big Satanists. Which is why all their kids are all constantly dying in horrific either either drug overdoses or horrible things. The Kennedys are cursed because their original fortune came from Satan. And there's a belief under the end of the bottom of the uh, like underneath the compound is a giant satanic temple. This has always been a thing. So she dates this guy. He brings her down here and they reveal the truth. You're actually a clone of this chick. You're meant to be Satan. So afterwards, she leaves that thing. She dumps this dude. And she becomes the biggest thing in pop music that's ever existed. She is so utterly powerful. It's not it. And basically, she is putting satanic images and, and concepts into her, through her music and through her videos to the children, man. It's all there. It's all there. <laughs> but what oh, is God. Your, what, what does your cat have to do with it? Oh, so <laughs> I reveal this. I reveal this, right? And I, I make a couple of videos about it. I'm like, whatever. So my one of my cats, my main cat, and he's in my videos sometimes. He's a good cat, Benji. His name is Benji. Benjamin. He's actually called Benjamin Caulfield the Third. He's named after the villain from Rent. Okay. Because I, well, I, I don't think he's actually a villain. He's actually, I think he's actually cool. He just wanted, he wanted his rent. <laughs> he, he's a landlord and they owe him money. And like, I never understood in rent why they're like, they feel like they don't have to pay rent. <laughs> you know I mean? like, it's not, but anyway, so I was like, he's been such, so I'm going to name my cat this. So he's Benjamin Caulfield, III, Benji. And so, and the day after I drop one of these videos, it's so weird. She puts up on her, her tweet. She's, she has a thing where she has a love breach at, and it says Benji Cat. <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell? Yo, and she threatened my cat. She threatened my cat. She basically was like, you keep making your videos, I'm going to murder your cat. Oh so then God. later on, I look into it, and she claims her cat's name is Benji, too. What are the chances of that? And I think she's really subtly threatening my cat. Okay. And she's going to kill my cat if I keep on t telling the truth about it. You know what I'm saying? But you know, Benji is ready to take the plunge. He he will die for the, for the truth to get out. So he told me he's cool if I keep making videos. And I will keep making videos. I've noticed you have not made a Taylor Swift video in a while. It's dangerous. You know what it is? I got, I got, <laughs> it is. It is. It's kind of scary. It's kind it of seems scary. dangerous to me. <laughs> it's super dangerous. It's super dangerous. But I that's wouldn't. why I'm here, man. That's why the voice of the fat man is here. It's for the people. <laughs> um, uh, uh, to be honest... There was a time when, like, you know, she was getting art artist of the decade, which was just like, you know, it's just signal speak for we worship Satan. And I was I, like, I, I'll I, make a video about this. 
Um, but I did. I was swamped with other stuff, and I was like, I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna let you go to like, this week. But yo, when she's back in the news doing something, I will get her. I will be there. You know what? Me, me and Veggie are gonna be there. No, no, I think about it. As eerie as that whole thing was, I got to chill up my spine just thinking about it because there's always the part of me that's like, what if some of this is true? It did just dawn on me that her rise to stardom is kind of unexplicable, right? It's not like she's a remarkably good singer, right? Right. She can't care. She, you know, she can carry a tune, but it's not like she's belting out. She's not like Shania Twain or anything like that. And she does always seem to be positioned in places to get things. Zach, did you know that Taylor Swift was the ambassador of New York City at one point? For what? <laughs> <laughs> to what? Ambassador to what, Steve? <laughs> no, 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 no. This is a real thing. This yeah, is the thing that happened. <laughs> like, she was declared the local ambassador to New York City. Like, like if you need to know about New York City, you, you want to know how to get a good Swift. sandwich, you talk to Taylor Swift about it. It's a weird and she's thing. she's not from New York. No, she's from Reading, <laughs> Pennsylvania. But what, what, I'm, what I'm pointing out is, is she? that, like... Um, West yeah, Rome, sorry. Yeah. Some weird stuff happens there. It makes sense. It's all I end up now. I, I'm just on a Wikipedia page. So. But what I'm saying is she is um, – it makes no sense her level of fame or the thing she gets from it's Ambassador of New York, Artist of the Decade. There's no way she's Artist of the You know what I'm saying? Like all this crazy shit. And, and don't get me wrong. I actually enjoy a lot of her music. I actually think 1989 was one of the best albums I've heard in a long time. Uh, but <laughs> – Obviously, yeah, what does the Bible say? Satan is beautiful. Satan is beautiful, right? So, like, although although I'm, you know, she physically isn't the type of check I'd go for. I'm saying her music is very beautiful. You know, I, I, you had you had me you had me hook on and sinker up until you said that. You know, she's not your type. She, she's a, she's a very attractive woman. Wait, hold on. She's very, she's, very, she's very beautiful, but remember, I'm half black, so I, you know, I like. I like them first. I'm not body shaming anybody. You you, ha you had me hook on a sinker up until then, and, and I can't support your your theory anymore. Takashi six nine. Oh. What? Takashi six nine. What? You can't just say a word. You know. He did a video. On it. I did a video on him, on, the, on him being a snitch. I mean, it's all there. You got to check out the video. But... He's one of the he's funniest the, people. He's horrible. <laughs> I really hope someone stabs him. <laughs> Two million views. Two million live views, dude. Can you so, believe that? Oh, my God, dude. Yes, I can believe it. But he is <laughs> one of the most hilarious people, and it's never on fucking purpose. You can't be a big bad guy in the rap game, and then a little bit of trouble comes your way, and fucking give everyone up. You can't be that person. He is one of the most, like, sometimes things are funny and not because they're intentionally funny or they're even a good situation. They're funny because of the implications and the lead up and what happened afterwards. That dude is on, on par with any of the great comedians for the shit antics that he pulls. It's fucking hilarious. I agree. Dude, He's ridic ridiculous. Here's the crazy thing, right? He responded to some of the people giving him shit about how many views he got on Instagram and like crashing YouTube or whichever one it was, vice versa. And uh, <laughs> I have to agree with Zach. Unintentionally funny, but also kind of a philosopher. He oh my God. <laughs> you're, you're fucking, you're buying that one. Oh, I can't kinda, support that statement. He kind of went into this monologue where he's like, I get it. You're mad at me. You look up. If you just look up, you see you don't have as many views as me. You spent your whole life being a real inward, living this real inward life, and then the snitch comes home and gets more views. Than you. It's like, man, that's amazing. That's <laughs> is he the highest profile snitch ever to not just instantly get taken out? Him and Frank Lucas. Okay, but he's yo he, yo Takashi six nine is worse because he was snitching on people he didn't have to snitch. <laughs> on. He's like. I know crazy. everything about everybody. What do you guys want? And they're like, no, no, so we're just Yo, trying to. There was to... a point where the attorney actually said to him, did you witness this happen? And he's like, then we can't hear about it. They had to <laughs> tell him to stop stitching someone. Because he was stitching, he was over. The, the cops were like, oh my thing. God, stop. Uh, <laughs> You're giving us too much also, work. <laughs> also, I doubt, I doubt the truth of any person, any dude, who claims that he was forced into a gang. 
And let's <laughs> face it, we love gang life. G- game life is fun. It's casual violence, it's sex whenever, it's drugs <laughs> or whatever, it's power, it's influence. Why would a young man not be into that? And he's like, and he's, and he's basically like, they forced me to do it. I didn't want to. I'm a good Christian boy. What? You have tattoos on. <laughs> on your face, dude. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't understand that guy, but he's one of the most accidentally hilarious entities I've ever seen. I agree. I agree. He's, he's, he's such a clown. I mean, terror is a clown, right? He's a clown. Yeah, literally. Uh, I'm just now. I'm just saying things to get you triggered. MMA, the most superior form of martial arts that's ever existed. There has been no other form of martial arts that's ever made any sense comparatively. Zach and I noticed one day that while you had done that quite hilarious video about the MMA mom, she had every right to be that intense. Her son knows the real martial arts, right? He's not some crazy guy running around. Okay. <laughs> it's BJJ, mom. She's a BJJ. I have no problems with MMA, but I know what you're trying. I know you're trying to goat me into BJJ. And I just have to say this Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, you know, oh, man. Man, have you ever thought I'm about actually... trying comedy? Like, some of the stuff, <laughs> some of the stuff, and not off the BJJ comic, because I could care less. I don't train. Um, but seriously, like, like, you know, writing, right? R- writing a novel or writing a story is no different than, than writing a joke. Right. Have you ever thought about sitting down and manifesting yourself into a comedian, maybe a writer for a sitcom, something like that? I I would love that opportunity. I would love to, you know, and I feel like real writers, they want to write and they'll write anything. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's the challenge. You wish that you were given the opportunity. Someone's like, Roy, write a sitcom. I would love to write you a pilot. I would love to do all that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the problem with, with uh, comedian, uh, comedy is like horror. You never know what's going to scare someone, and you never know what's going to make them laugh. It's tough because, you know, every time I think I'm being funny, there's always a group of people who are like, you are very unfunny. <laughs> this is not good. You haven't this found your good. niche. That's why. You have not found your niche. <laughs> the thing is, um, I've I've wrote some comedy bits. Nothing ever made, made light or whatever, but, I, like, really, that's where I learned about why it's so important to have an end to a story, right? You come up with that punchline, and then you make the story around it, right? I, I, I Comedy, I feel like you'd suit yourself really well for, for comedy or a, a sitcom, because you could start in a spot and then just go so far off of one side that that sitcom would be, <laughs> would be a fucking hit. That's my dream, man. I would It'd be the that. new Seinfeld. Absolutely. Honestly. And, and, you know, and that's, and that's one of the problems, is that, like, you know, my, you know, my genre comic book there isn't a lot of comedy in comic book or not you know and like they're, they're, you know and even when they're comedy they're all ripoffs deadpool is a ripoff of old school she hulk which now is being ripped off by harley quinn because they don't know how to do anything than break the fourth wall they don't know how to do comedy a comic book. yeah um it's, it's actually very hard it's a, it's actually very hard not, you're not seeing anything original in the comedy Actually, comic books, you'll see original horror and you'll see original every For some reason. Comedy is not blossom in that genre. But I would love the opportunity of it. Are you kidding? I would love to work on a, you know, some of my great yeah, yeah, sitcoms are like 30 Rock or, or whatever. I would love to work on shows like that. Um, if given the opportunity. Now, because like I said, I'm going to keep working as a writer until I or dead in a gutter from syphilis. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good. Uh, I like that you brought that back there. Yeah, I just. <laughs> I've always. I maybe I should take a formal writing class and and really learn how to how to structure things a little bit better. But um, comedy is is a passion, and I, I feel like with your videos, your videos are always you know serious topics centered around the funny way of, of looking at it and, and, and doing it right. And it's, and it, it is comedy, right? I hope you have the comedy tag on your, on your channel on YouTube. Cause it, it, it is funny. Well, and you. it's, it's very, it's very, very well done. Right. And I think thank at, at so some much. point, I, mean, the- I hope someone picks you up at some point and goes, let's give this guy a chance. 
right? We got this new sitcom starring The Rock. Let's let's give this guy a shot and write some funny shit because The Rock is the same character <laughs> in everything awesome. he plays. Yeah, awesome. Maybe this guy can and transform you know, The Rock know, into something better. I, it comes from like you know when I was younger, I realized how absurd the world is. Mm-hmm. Everything, at the end of the day, is funny. You know, like somebody's like, "We're kicking you out of school," and then you realize you're like, "This is hysterical." <laughs> <laughs> you're like, "You're getting fired." This is hysterical. Thank you. Your finally. mother's died. This is hysterical. Everything is actually really funny if you think about it. Right. Because what it is is like, if you really think about the concept of like God, like God's up there and He's controlling everything, and then he's like, you know what? I'll make Roy's car flip today. <laughs> <laughs> you got me, God. That was that was funny, bro. That was funny. Thanks. The way you screwed me like that? That's hysterical. Oh, um, so it's all funny. It's all funny. I do think it is. I think that's what real comedy is about. That people realize the absurdity of life and living and all these things that we're working on. Do you ever miss the Kevin Smith era of movie making? Uh, the undisciplined, uh, <laughs> barely written a script, uh, uh, bullshit. Yeah, I mean, uh, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? Like, Please. do you miss? Do you miss? Uh, do you miss the mall rats? Do you miss? Do you miss the chasing Amy? Do you miss? Because when I've always thought, of when whenever I've heard you tell jokes or whenever I've heard you monologue before, I'm like, wow, this is a good. <laughs> oh, Roy time. <laughs> That's a good catch. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. You were saying every time I say something. Yeah, it's always it's always struck me. I'm like, wow, his uh, his dialogue is reminiscent, but re- uh, better than that. And I'm I'm wondering, do you miss that era where it was like before the Seth Rogans came along, where you actually had someone telling the type of jokes that were kind of akin to our generation? Now I gotta warn you. I feel you. Zach and Zach has a friend. That is a black belt level apathetic joker. I've never seen anything like it. There is nothing that is off topics to this this one individual who I will not shot on here. You guys are very similar. In fact, the whole time you were talking, I was like, man, imagine if we got them together and they stopped speaking English and just start humming to each other. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be on the same frequency for sure. I don't know, man. It, it is it is hard. I I, I love them to death. But sometimes you can't, you have to be very cautious of new people that you introduce to them because of what their level of, of potentially being offended is. You have, you, <laughs> oh, well, you would I'm, literally, you literally cannot get offended. offended. No, no, no. <laughs> people say that. People say that. But you literally <laughs> cannot get offended when you're around them. And it's great when you introduce new people to them. It's amazing. You know, I would, I would love to be, this is a challenge. I would love to meet him and see if he, he's offensive because I, I, there's very little that. <laughs> but do you do you miss that? Do you miss that era? Those are those that era of filmmaking of joke telling. So to tell tell you the truth, I, here's what I I don't. You know why? Because I like that I have I have control of it. People have forgotten about that, and I it's mine. It's mine <laughs> to control. I mean, I'm like into it, and people are like, "Where is this weird comedy?" And I'm like. Well, I was a child of the 90s, and <laughs> you apparently weren't watching movies, but I was, and that's, that's where my humor comes from. So I like having control over that. I hear you. It's not what comedy is now, um, but I do I do like being hit to that, and they, they don't even realize. You know, that, that's a great It's kind of like when you quote something, and it's super clever, and you don't let people know it's a quote. They're like, oh, this guy's deep. And I'm like, I took that from Malcolm X, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I fell for a quote today. This uh, jackass sent me a quote while I was at work. And I'm like, man, that's a powerful quote. And I'm writing back in the moment like, what a great word, Zach. And I instantly regret taking anything he said seriously. <laughs> what, was it? Hold on, what was it? Actually, I'll do this. And I thought this was a really was good quote? fucking setup and a, set up and a knockdown. <laughs> Like, uh, I'm really like, hold on, hold on. I'll find it. I'll find it. Uh, it says, uh, "Did you know no one could destroy iron, but its own rust can? Uh, likewise, no one could destroy a person, but but his own mindset." Great quote, right? And I said, and "Steve was like, wow, that's a good word." And I'm like, "I'm so motivated to lie in bed and do nothing." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I thought we were gonna have an adult conversation about philosophical stuff. <laughs> so. Zach, you got anything else for the Mantis, man? Uh, I don't think I don't think I do, Mantis. You've you've been you've been wonderful. You've been, you've been great. 
Yeah, oh, thanks for having me, guys. I've had such a great time. Absolutely. You have an open invite. <laughs> yeah. Anytime you want to come back on, j- just let Yo, us know. I'm, pl- I'm trying to plan events where we, we can all get together. Like We can we can yeah, make it happen. Let's, uh, we can let's, make this happen. Let's do I that. Will come let- to Fish Kill. Let's do that and let's uh let's let's get it let's get on your in your channel and, and we'll do something over there if we all get together. Absolutely. That this, would be amazing. Um thank you everybody for watching. This has been episode thirty two, I believe. God bless you guys. We're thank talking you. with the dad podcast. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and our website, all talking with a dad. Have a great night. And remember remember to check out Voice of the Fat Man. Yes, <laughs> actually <laughs> Mantis, <laughs> Mantis, you, you all your stuff will be linked below. Where where can we find you? Um, so yeah, uh, a voice of the fat man is my YouTube channel. If you want to check out some of my older comics, um, you know, on webtoon, you know, black triangles and her science, check that out. Absolutely. And I'm, Everybody I'm on Twitter, Mantis comics, Twitter, Mantis comics. Everybody check Please, Mantis you know? out. It's great. His, his content is, is amazing. Thank you. Yeah, again, I love guys. you guys. You guys have a good night. Ciao for now, bitches. <laughs>